Hello, this is Instructor Howard. We are breaking down coding cases for BC 3030, Week 3. Remember, you will need a copy of your coding exam with you, something to write with, your CPT, and your ICD-10 manual. You may also need a medical dictionary. Give or take, you can also use Google. Let's get started. Okay, I have a copy of the coding exam in front of me for week three. As you can see, it seems like it's pretty long and pretty detailed, but it's actually not that complicated. If you've reviewed the Breaking Down Coding Cases videos for weeks one through three, I'm sorry, one and two, then this one should not be a problem. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is darken or highlight the area where the word location is, right click, remove content control, as usual. Then we wanna go through and highlight the pertinent facts and the pertinent information. Where is this service rendered? Location, outpatient hospital. Who is the attending physician and or the surgeon? Since this is an operative report, we're going to highlight information related to who the surgeon is. We have a preoperative and postoperative diagnosis. In this particular example, our postoperative diagnosis is a little bit different than our preoperative. The reason is because the procedure has been done and since the provider had a chance to examine the patient during the procedure process, he was able to get a more confirmed diagnosis based on the patient's condition. So, we're no longer needing to review information or code for the preoperative. We will only need to code for the postoperative diagnosis. And the only difference in these particular two um, diagnoses is that this condition is considered congenital. So when he did the surgery, he just realized that the patient was born with this condition. Okay, so we have a short description of the procedure performed. Right hydrocele repair and one stage repair of hypospadias and preputial on lay flat. Okay, so instead of highlighting this entire procedure, I am going to highlight the main term, repair, and the subterm, hydrocele, which is also a hernia. And then we have a secondary procedure, repair, hypospadias, and then all of this with, we'll locate some more details when we locate our main term and look for our code with this type of repair. It may or may not be relevant. We won't know until we check the CPT manual. Okay, we see that the provider gave general anesthesia, but since we're not coding for the anesthesiologist today, that's irrelevant. We have the age of the patient. 12 month old male has a mid shaft hypospadias with a very mild degree of cordy or corday. He also has a persistent right hydrocele. So these are two conditions and the provider is repairing two separate conditions today. Okay, so what I want to do, and this is just, these are just his diagnosis, um, which is also here, your postoperative diagnosis. So I don't want to highlight that information. What I want to do is um, first locate our diagnosis for our problems. And we're going to do that by using our ICD manual. And then we're going to um, come back and look at our CPTs more closely. 
Okay, now I have my electronic coding manual up and I did um, search the term to save time. I started with the first diagnosis of hypospadias. And if you guys do not know what this condition is, it's um, good to Google it because you always want to pay attention to what the problem is so you can have a better understanding of the procedure. So I um, reviewed that and I'm given a a variety of types or some subterms. So the provider um, mentioned a few of these words in his operative report. So what I want to do is I want to review some information related to the procedure. The first procedure, and I don't have it up so that you can see it, but you can follow along with me. The first procedure was um, addressing the inguino or the hernia or the uh, hydrocele. So I want to go to the second paragraph and review details related to the hypospadias and how that procedure was done. He's just pretty much talking about um, how he accessed the uh, the skin, he was circumscribed, and then there's a sentence, I think the fourth sentence, that says once the penile shaft had been mobilized, there was very minimal cordae. And then I read this, the last paragraph, and he's um, talking about fixing the flap, and then further mo mobilize and rotate it around behind, and I'm on the uh, second page. Um, or the second portion, almost in front of the questions. I'm seeing the words or the sentence that says the prepuce was reanastomosed and um, the penile skin and the midline defect in the shaft skin closed. So he did not necessarily mention that the hypospadias was penile, but he did address um, several portions of the patient's uh, penis and the urethra um, and the meatus as he's talking about the procedure. So for one of these um, codes, it's safe to choose penile. And um, even if you choose unspecified, that would be fine. But to get more detail out of the, you know, the code to the highest level of specificity. And remember, we're dealing with the urinary system. And this is the male urinary system. So it may be a little weird looking this stuff up um, this week. But, you know, it's, it's healthcare, it's medicine. And this is generally what we do on a daily basis. But um, even if you don't choose you know, penile and you use choose unspecified, that would be fine. But in the future, if you're coding this for a real life scenario, you want to make sure that you code to the highest level of specificity and the highest level of detail. Okay, so we have pulled the information for hypospadias and um, we have another diagnosis and this is a hydrocele. All right, and once again, we start in the alpha index. I'm doing my search term this way, hydrocell, and it's telling us um, this non-essential modifiers is if it's spermatic cord, testes, tunica vaginalis, and let's see what we can locate. It just says that the patient has a mild degree mid shaft hypospadias he also has persistent right hydrocele okay so he's not giving us the type of hydrocele okay yeah he's saying that the hypospadias has congenital cordy but he does not call the hydrocele congenital so in this scenario let's choose or let's go with the first one which is just hydrocele and this says hydrocele unspecified he did state that the patient had right hydrocele 
And let's look at the procedure. It says the patient was given a caudial block, which is anesthesia. Um, he made an inguinal incision. Okay. And he resected. So he's, he says there was no evidence of communication of the hernia. Okay, so. And he's not really describing um, anything else related to the hydrocele. He's just saying that it's hydrocele, so he's not calling it. Um, he's not calling it um, spermatocele. He's not saying it's infected. So it's best, if it's not documented, it's best to code it as um, unspecified. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so our final diagnosis is um, Corday, C-H-O-R-D-E-E, -E, and he's calling this congenital. So I've already searched the term in my index, and I am looking at the fact that this is located or indented underneath hypospadias. So these are two different diagnoses. We have hypospadias unspecified and we also have um, congenital cordae. These are two separate conditions but they each have the same three digit category so they each can be coded separately. Okay so now we're going to go off into looking back at our case and paying attention to the procedure. As mentioned um, when we were reviewing the diagnosis coding, the provider addressed the hernia or hydrocele first, hydrocele repair, and then he has a separate procedure. I'm going to put a little slash here one stage repair of the hypospadias. Now the reason that it says one stage repair is because there are some procedures that can be done in stages. So it would be stage one or the first portion and then the second portion like skin grafting when it's something that's really serious. But in this con in this particular um, scenario, he did the repair in one stage, and that will actually more than likely be located in your uh, ICD-10. I'm sorry, your CPT. Okay, so our main term is repair, and he's given some detail here about the procedure that we may have to come back and look at if our um, coding selection requires more detail or there's a few different details or variations in the procedures then that's when we come here and we look at our procedure note to see if it makes a difference or what the difference is. So in the CPT index there's a few different ways to um, search your procedures. There's a couple of differences in your main term. Uh, it could be the actual uh, word repair or it could be the condition. In our case, the patient had hypospadias. Did I spell that right? And here it is. I don't have on my glasses, so bear with me. Okay, so we have hypospadias, we have repair, and then we have various stages. This one says one stage, and this one says uh, meato advancement perennial. All right, so let's look at our case to pay attention to if any of these other um, subterms are documented in our coding. Okay, we see the word um, one stage right here. And then I'm trying to see if, I know I have repair. I'm going to review those codes right quick. Okay, 
Okay. And then let's look at the one stage with the meadow advancement. So as we look at the uh, one stage or the details of the one stage, we have a semicolon that says with simple meato advancement. Um, I do see him mentioning some information about a flap, but he also says one stage, and this is the uh, short description procedure perform one stage with prepucio onlay flap and let me move my case over I'm actually looking at that on another screen because I want to keep this screen open okay so this information right here um, does not have to be present in the case in order for it to be valid and likewise when we have a main um, standalone code all the codes indented underneath includes the information above it so we could take this semicolon like Lego blocks remove that information and plug the information in one of these codes behind it and then just use this one code or one of these codes so we here we have um, with local skin flaps and it says prepucial flap and this is also talking about prepucial onlay flap so this particular wording, and let's look at all of them. This particular wording in this scenario best matches the procedure that was done for today. So as you can see, there's a lot of different types of hypospodias prepares, but you want to pay attention to the stage. In this case, it was one stage. And then the provider also mentioned some other details about prepucial onlay um, flip a flap and that's actually mentioned in the case and also in this procedure so that was a freebie now you have to deal with the hydrocell repair you can do the same thing by going to the word hydrocell or you can go to the word repair let's see what hydrocell gives us oops that was not the right code. All right, hide your seal index. And then this is a, sh a much shorter list. And then we have the word hide your seal, and then we have repair, our reference code. And this just says repair of hide your seal. And is there any additional details related to the hydrocell repair? No, there isn't. Okay, so there you have it. You have two procedures for today. And um, there are some rules related to your modifier usage. Um, if you're dealing with um, a procedure that was rendered at the same time as another in the same or similar organ system, then there is a modifier that you will have to pin and you also want to pay attention to the side of the body so that could be another modifier that you use for today so this is our third and final week of um, coding these scenarios uh, weeks four and five are just dealing with your um, certification mock exam as you can see this is the most extensive coding for this week but it's really easy this information the reason why I didn't cross it out this week and I probably did in weeks one and two is because I had to go back through some of this information to pull more details related to the diagnosis um, some information related to the procedure so sometimes this may not um, have to be viewed if it's a simplified service or procedure. In this case, he had a very detailed procedures and I wanted to make sure that when we got to the index that we had this information available to come back and reference to. And this is pretty much how you use it. You start here when you're dealing with your procedures, short description, research your codes, 
once you get like I did uh, various types of procedures or a lot of variations you come back to the full description and then you pay attention to the information in there so I hope this was helpful to you guys and I want to make sure that you all submit your um, test and your coding on time so that you can just focus on your um, CPC mock exam this week. Um, thanks for viewing. My contact information is 805-824-0065. Text or call me if you run into difficulty. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.